everyone, it's Julia. I'm back with another project made out of this um, vintage primitive quilt. I shared a couple weeks ago some journals that I made out of this, but this week I wanted to try some fold over clutches and you can kind of see my idea here what I'm going to do. I'm leaving that outer border and the binding on and that's going to form the top of it. So that's all finished off already. I, just, I thought that would just work be really a, a easy way. Now I absolutely love the backing of this quilt, but I felt like it needed some a little bit more body to it, and so I am going to line it, um, and I'm going to add, or I already added a medium weight iron-on interfacing to that lining, and that's going to give it a, more body, just, it's going to have a, just a little bit more weight to it. Um, my pieces are cut uh, approximately 17 inches long by 13 inches and that lining is cut an, another, another inch or so longer than that and that top will fold over and you'll see more of that in a little bit. I've got a little um, uh, some scraps here I'm going to do a little belt loop a uh, button loop excuse me and then I've got some other strips cut there for the uh, straps. The straps are going to be cross body and they're going to be adjustable or you can take them off completely and just use it as a as a clutch. I wanted to share now some of these pieces are really damaged and so I'm going to be adding some patches to it. I'm doing three of these quilts so I'm, I'm working kind of on all three of these at the same time and um, I'm just sharing here some scraps that I picked out that I'm going to be covering those holes. Um, one particular fabric in this quilt disintegrated over the years. I, I'm thinking this is maybe 40s fabric it's, and it's all hand stitched. It's, it's, just, it's just really cool and I'm so grateful that I'm able to salvage it and make some things out of it. But I took it home with me and I did in this in front of the TV. I just added some just some stitches and then I put some of that tatting. This is vintage tatting that I added. Um, I did that cherry cluster and then I did some, just some running stitch to fill in some of the, that solid blue. Added some vintage motif, the lace motif. Um, and then, like I said, I worked on, all, on three of these at this kind of at the same time. This is the one that was really damaged. And so I did add quite a few of my own patches to it. Added a little flower applique and some, again, some little pieces of lace. And then a lot of stitches that I just added inside those patches, maybe some French knots and some X's. And then I did add another strip just using a blanket stitch, kind of practicing my slow stitching and just um, having some fun with it. But that's how that one, the whole look is. And then the last one that I worked on was not too damaged. It was one little spot that was, and I covered that with that piece of lace. And then I added that little uh, uh, vine with some slow stitching. The next thing I'm going to work on is the strap. And I did this just in a continuous strip and then I cut, cut them and I, they're approximately finished. I think they were like 42 inches long or so. Um, I'm going to miter these, jo these joining them by mitering a, 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 the corners. So I'm laying them in an L shape and we'll be stitching from corner to corner um, and then we'll be clipping them and then pressing them open. Got them, got them all sewn now and then, like I said I did this in one long strip. I do like to press these open. And then there's just a lot of um, ironing on this because I'm, you, I'm going to fold it over and then fold it again. Now these strips I cut at three inches wide and this is a great way to use up scraps too because this whole purse is kind of a patched look so this is a scrappy patched look um, um, strap as well. But it's three inches wide and so it's going to be a three-fourths of an inch strap. I sewed it on both sides, just top stitched it all the way down on both sides. And then for, next thing I want to do is just add the little loops that I'm going to need. Instead of adding any oh, purse hardware to this, um, I just did these loops and the strap is going to go inside these loops. Just a really easy way to make your, make your little strap. 
Now there was so much bulk in some on parts of this um, because the batting is really old and it bunched in places. And so I'm taking my scissor and carefully removing that batting from the salvage or the um, my seam allowance edge. So on both sides of this I, and, and the bottom, I am going to be removing all this bunched up batting. And you can sort of feel the bunch, bunched up batting in the bag too, but I just kind of, it's okay. I was fine with that. It just kind of adds to the charm of the bag. Now I, I cut that lining about an inch, an inch and a half longer, and I folded that over. And that's going to remain open, and that's how I'm going to turn this. I did place that folded edge away from that binding, just about, oh, about a half inch or so, and that'll make more sense than just in, the, in a little bit here. But I do stitch all the way around this. I'm just clipping the corners. And then I'll be turning this so the right sides are out. Just giving it a good press and then rolling those seams out. And now, like I said, this is about a half inch or so away from that top. And I'm just going to fold that corner in and give it put, just put a little pin there. Just kind of fold those in, that raw edge there, and just, pl and just place another pin. And now on to the button loop. I just sewed, a, I don't know, a, I don't know what they call casing. You'll see it there. Um, and I'm going to, these are my fast turns. And so I just push, put that fast, that little tube in there, and then I'm going to, uh, these are just an interesting little thing. If I can find them, I'll link them. An easy way to turn your, um, your little tubes, your fabric tubes. Once I have this fabric tube pressed, I felt it was a little bit um, wide, so I am going to turn that in one more time and top stitch this. I picked up my fast turns many years ago at a quilt shop or a quilt show, and it was on sale. They're they're pricey now, but they are they're nice for turning any sort of a, a fabric tube. And that's going to be what that's going to look like. I'm just going to place it inside there, and then I'll top stitch that. And I will also top stitch the bottom and then top stitch the sides. It was a little bit of a struggle for my sewing machine to um, do those sides. I did have to walk it over some of the bulk, but it was doable. And it is so easy with this strap. I'm just putting it in and tying a knot. You can easily make this shorter or take it out completely. And I top stitched this from the top in the ditch. And I didn't like how it looked on the on the underside. And so I'm just going to add a piece of lace there. I always make things up as I go along. <laughs> so some things don't quite turn out. But I, you, there's always a way to fix it. I'm just going to add a little button there. And this is w what it looks like. I just really love it. I think these would make wonderful gifts. I do have these in my Etsy store. I'll link that down below too for you. And uh, just so cute. Here's what they look like. And they're, all three of them are a little different. But you can just tell the age and the fabric. And they're just wonderful. Hope you enjoyed this, everybody. Bye for now.